So Pat, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I, I'm doing great, man. Thanks, Seth, for having me here. Well, I appreciate you so much taking a little bit of time to talk with us. Again, like you've been a huge inspiration in my life. So, you know, as we uh, kind of relate what you do to the world of real estate investing, you know, the name of your site, Smart Passive Income. Passive income is like one of those buzzwords that gets thrown around a lot in a right. lot of different businesses and real estate is no exception. It's something that people talk about all the time. And sometimes we hear some debate about this term because everybody talks about it, but it's kind of elusive. Like this idea that money just comes in while you sleep, requiring nothing from you whatsoever. It sounds too good to be true. And I'm just curious, like, I'm sure you probably hear this, this comment and question too. Like, how do you define passive income and how much ongoing attention do these sources of income require? Passive income is different depending on who you ask, right? And if you, if you ask somebody in the investing world, uh, it's going to be different than somebody in, in my world of online business. But to me, passive income is uh, specifically the ability for us to create businesses. So I, I, I focus on businesses, specifically online businesses, that you invest time into so that you can help others and create automated income that comes in over time. There's no such thing as, in my eyes, 100% passive income, meaning there's no such thing as 100% set it and forget it. Even in real estate, I know that you know, even if you buy a property, you still have to manage that property. You still have to have tenants come in and whatnot. If, even in the stock market, you still have to manage your portfolio and stuff. Same thing with online business. However, and, and the, the way that I discovered this uh, was in 2008. I uh, had gotten laid off from my architecture job. And I got very inspired by a guy named Tim Ferriss who wrote this book called The 4-Hour yeah. Workweek, who was like, mm -hmm. hey, you can build these businesses that work for you. This is like the new way to do business. You could set up websites that serve your audience and give them information that are actually helpful and get paid without you actually having to be there all the time. It takes time to set up. It's hard, but you could do it. And so I, that's what I did. I took some knowledge I had about a particular exam called the lead exam in, in the architecture space. And I packaged that information into a website and then an ebook. And I sold that ebook for $19. And what happens is a person can come on my website, they buy the ebook, it gets automatically delivered to them via email. And I could literally wake up the next morning and go, whoa, I have had like four sales while I was sleeping because somebody mm -hmm. on the other side of the world needed this information. And that's really cool. And what ended up happening was after I launched that website and I finally launched that ebook, this $19 ebook, I made $7,908.55 in a single month, my first month. Uh, which was two and a half times more than I was making in architecture. And I was like, holy crap. That's and crazy. Like, I, I calculated, I think like 45% of my sales were while I was sleeping. And I was like, this is unreal. Mm -hmm. This is not real life. Like the FBI is going to come and go, this is illegal. You can't do this. <laughs> but that didn't happen. What ended up happening was more and more people started buying my products. And I started adding more products, like an audiobook. Spent two weeks recording an audiobook actually scrapping it because my voice was so terrible. I hired somebody to do it for me, paid him about, uh, I think, $2,600. And I packaged that and put it on my website. And I was able to make up that cost in a single day after selling that. And that audiobook had generated about $250,000 over the next couple of years for me, which is, again, I had recorded that once. I invested that time and invested money that time to have somebody create that product for me. But then it was just on autopilot after that. And that's what, to me, passive income can do. And it's, it's not just the ability to make more money. It's the ability to have that flexibility in time. So that, yes, on a Tuesday, if I just wanted to go up to Disneyland because I'm only a couple hours away with my family, we can go do that. Yes, I got to work and I do work quite hard. But there are moments when I can just take time off and I'm not tied to a nine to five. I'm tied to whenever I want to work, which is amazing. Something that you do really well at is teach about the importance of building a brand. And I want to talk a little bit about the power of branding for any type of business, but if we could narrow it down specifically for real estate investors, for our audience, why do you think that it's important and uh, what can it do for you? I, I want to lay some, some context for this question because a lot of people that I talk to that I know, they don't really like branding. They say, look, I can't, track an ROI when I do things like, you know, Facebook and get on social media and do these things. I'd rather just do my thing in my local market. Um, and I kind of disagree with that. Like, I, I think that there's power in building a reputation um, mm -hmm. that is on the local scale and even bigger if, if you can grow it. So what are your thoughts to that? I mean, you said a perfect word there, and that's reputation. When a lot of people hear branding, they think of Facebook. They think of their logo. They think of their website. They think of these like technical pieces, and that's not always fun. 
your brand is not those things. Those are just representative of your brand. And a logo, for example, just you know, signifies that. But your brand is what people say about you, what people can expect about you. It's what people talk about when they share you with others. That's, that's brand to me. That's what you want to become known for. So there's a few important aspects of that that are really important. It's, it's not about the logo. The logo is important and, and visual branding is, is, is one part of it. But what is important is what do you stand for? What do people come to you for? What are you known for? What is special about you? What's your unique selling proposition? What, it, what, what, what would you want people to say if they're recommending your, your business to somebody else? How would you want them to describe that? That becomes your brand. Because if you imagine that and you, and you just say, oh, well, you know, it's just, uh, you know, Pat, he, like he's, he's real estate. He's cool. If that's your brand, you're failing. Your brand should be, oh, you should go to Pat because, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to get anybody to care for you more. He actually gets to know you. He gets to know your family. And that's why you should go with Pat. Because all these other people, you see signs for them on these lawns everywhere. You see billboards. You see their, their ads on bus stops. You won't really get to know them. And they won't really care about you. But Pat will. And that's branding, right? And, and, and that only comes with experience. That, like, you can't create that until you take action. So if you're just starting out, you, you don't really have a brand yet. Yes, you might have a logo and a name, and that's cool. And that's important so that people can recognize you and so that people can talk about you and recommend you. But your brand becomes what you create. And, 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 and to me, the most important part of branding is the experience that your people have, even if it's just one person, because that one person can turn into 10 people, could turn into 100 people. And that to me, like I, I, I wrote a whole book about this. It's called Superfans. It's creating these experiences in your business that define who you, who you are and what you stand for and, and your brand so that it becomes easier to grow your business from within because those people equal referral traffic referrals. So all this stuff about Facebook and SEO and like website traffic, like, yeah, that's kind of important. But what's more important is, well, what's going to happen when people get there? And um, it's, it's like, if, if you think about how business was in the old days, right? Like small town days, so Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this quite a bit. Back in the small town days, you would go to Bob the baker because Bob, yeah, he had good bread. But also when you walked in the store, Bob would ask you about your family and how your kids were doing and the soccer game last week. And you jam on stuff that you know you both love to talk about. And then even if a supermarket opened up in between that had, you know, bread that was cheaper, you would still walk a little bit further to go to Bob because you have that relationship with Bob. You know that in that experience, you're going to walk in the door and he's going to greet you. He's going to care for you. He's going to ask you about your family. That's how business should be done today. And especially with something as high touch like real estate, I mean, we all have opportunities to do some amazing things to create those little moments that make us feel special as, as clients, as customers yet we're not taking advantage of it. I mean, I think that's the cool thing about where we're at today. We have tools that we didn't have access to before, like Instagram, for example. Instagram, a lot of people are using, and what are they doing? They're like, oh, I need to get more followers, more followers, more followers. But what about the followers that you already have? Have you sent a video to an individual just saying, hey, just wanted to make sure you're, you're cool, like anything I can help you with? 10 seconds it'll take, but it's gonna blow their mind because you just took a little bit of time to care for them. And, 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 and those little moments like that, go a very long way and they're right at our fingertips yet we're not doing it. That, that to me is yeah. what branding is, that experience that people have in, in your business. Interesting thought about that because I'm sure you're no stranger to this, Pat, where you probably have a million and one people that want your attention and want, want something from you. And I know to create a super fan experience like this, to really change somebody's day or even life with a, you know, taking time to do a video or something like that, like it takes time from you to do that. Like it's oh, in a course. way, in a way it doesn't seem like it's scalable. Like you really have to pick and choose who you're going to invest in, which relationships are worth, you know, trying to make them super fans. How do you decide like, okay, it's worth me spending two minutes to make this video email and send it versus I'll just send them a two word reply. Or maybe a better question is, is there a better way to scale it so you can make masses of people super fans? Yeah, and, and number one, you don't need a ton of super fans. I think you know, we're always in this grow, get bigger mindset, but I think we can go deeper. We can have a deeper mindset. And there's an article written by a man named Kevin Kelly called A Thousand True Fans. I don't know if you heard about this article. Yeah. It was written in 2007, really inspiring to me because it really showed me that I didn't have to create a blockbuster hit. I didn't have to create the next eBay or Excel or Uber to create an amazing life. I could just have a thousand true fans because his thesis was if you had a thousand true fans, and they loved what you did and your service, your art, your creative, whatever. Uh, and they paid you $100 a year for that, 
creative. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not very much. It's less than $10 a, a month. Um, and a super fan will usually spend much more, but that's on the low end. So a thousand true fans times $100 a year, you're already at a six-figure business, right? So it just showed me, wow, I don't need to change the entire world. I just need to go into a little world and, and become somebody's favorite, become a thousand people's favorite. Mm -hmm. But there's no how-to in Kevin Kelly's article, which is why I wrote the book Super Fans. But to me, it's not always about scaling. It's going deeper so you can get those people who will help you grow right? Those true fans. On the other, on the other end, yes, I, it's important to have that one-on-one -on -one and, and like I talked about with those videos and you can only do so many of them in a day. And I do schedule once a week on Fridays, a 30 minute time period where literally I'm just batching those videos to individuals. Even though I have an email list of 220,000, I still find it very valuable and important to create those one-on-one -on -one connections. And I put time in for that. I'm not doing it eight hours a day, but I have a little bit of time where I do that because here's what happens. Sometimes one of those people that I send a video to out of the, out of the you know, 25 that I do in that half hour period, they'll spread that message and go, wow, Pat Flynn just sent me a video. Oh, who's Pat Flynn? Oh, let me go dive in. And that person becomes you know, into my ecosystem from there. And I didn't have to pay for that. It yeah. just took a minute of my time. But on the other hand, there's some strategies that I talk about in the book to scale this. So one great way to do this is to feature a community member in front of all the other members of your community and all the other traffic that you have. And what that does is it kind of, yes, you're featuring one person, you're speaking to that one person, you're highlighting that one person, but everybody sees that and that one person represents all of them. Mm -hmm. Because even though you're only giving that one person that attention, you're actually giving your entire audience that attention because that one person represents that brand. So featuring your community members, I've done this on my podcast quite a bit. I've invited my students on and I've asked them questions about, you know, so I have a podcasting course, for example. I invite my students on to talk about, well, why did you start a podcast? What was hard about it? What has happened since then? And of course, naturally through that, they go, oh, and by the way, Pat, I have to thank you for helping me with that because I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Mm -hmm. Without even asking, they're leaving these amazing testimonials about the experience they've had in my brain. Of course, what happens is people go, oh my gosh, like I'm just like Dr. B, I'm 60 years old too, and she was able to do a podcast and Pat helped her? Well, I'm gonna do it too, and I think Pat's, Pat's my guy. And the yeah. same thing for you, even in real estate. If you every once in a while talk, like I would imagine if I was in real estate, here is what I would do. Every once in a while, I would pull an amazing story and almost create like a, like a video or a documentary style like thing about a particular family who might be my target audience family, you know, a family, two young kids or whatever, and just pull out some of the struggles they had with real estate, uh, uh, what, what their problems were and how they ended up getting through that. And of course, naturally, that just helps promote my brand. I'm not asking them questions like, hey, tell me why I'm awesome and why my business was able to help you. Naturally, that, that comes out. Um, or if, if I'm teaching people how to, you know, invest in real estate and flip houses, I would do like, hey, here are five uh, people who I taught how to flip houses. Here's each of the houses. Here's what they look like before. Here's what they look like after. And here's a nice picture and smile of this person with a big check afterwards because they spent four months doing this and they made it worth their time. Yeah. You can do this too. Here's how to get started. Yeah. I mean, maybe this differs in different uh, industries, but... I think the bar is actually set kind of low these days. Like, um, yeah. you know, a, a lot of times when I email somebody or, or call them, like it's not uncommon for them to just never respond to me. And like, that's almost like par for the course in some cases. <laughs> so the, the fact that somebody sends any kind of thoughtful response, sometimes get, like just that alone can put you ahead of everybody else. But especially if you like really put thought into it or make it a legitimately helpful interaction. I remember the first time I sent you an email, Pat, back in 2013, I think I asked you what camera you were using or something and you sent me like a, a little one sentence email and I remember screaming at the top of my lungs to my wife because I couldn't believe the actual Pat Flynn responded to my email. It was a huge, huge deal in my life. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you're right. I mean, uh, when I respond to people's emails, people remember that. And I yeah. think that's because most people don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and this is why people like Gary Vee stand out because even though he has, you know, he has like 50 X more people to uh, who follow him than I do, right? A hundred times more. Yet you still see him engaged in his Instagram and connecting with people and responding. And he, no, he doesn't respond to everybody, but everybody sees him respond. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the other big thing here. And the advantage that we have with social media is that, well, our conversations can be public and, and we can show up even though we're not individually reaching out to every single person. But when you do, it's special because it doesn't happen with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, um, is this the third book you've written, Pat? This is the third book. The first book was called Let Go. It was about how I got let go from architecture, but grew into an entrepreneur and in doing so had to let go of who I thought I was supposed to be. So it was kind of a double meaning there. That was in 2013. 
My second book, Will It Fly, came out in 2016. That was to help business owners figure out what business they were going to do and how help them validate their business ideas before wasting their time and money. And self-published, that became a Wall Street Journal bestseller, which I didn't even know was possible. And that was largely due to the super fans that I built who just come out in droves mm -hmm. who want to support me because I was able to help them in some way, shape, or form. And then this new book, Super Fans, uh, coming out August 13th, I'm really excited about. And it's really... Um, I feel biz business, all businesses, no matter what size, need to read this because it's how businesses should be done. It's how we're going to future-proof our business. It's business insurance because social media is changing. Like even though people follow us, they don't see all our, our all our posts. Even on YouTube, people aren't like most of my subscribers don't see my videos, which is like sad. They subscribe, they want to see those videos, but algorithms are getting in the way, and it's because these companies have, you know, investors. They need to get you know you have to pay to play essentially now but when you have super fans like these are your people they're gonna find you they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna love you to death no matter what you you don't even need a website and they're gonna make they're gonna build one for you right mm -hmm. because they love you so much and this is this is this is future proofing your business and if you have clients in in your in your uh real estate that just know you and you love you know they love you for what you do and how you've treated them i mean they could turn into 10 20 100 clients from there yeah. and uh you know, that's going to be more powerful than any Facebook ad, in my opinion. I think if anybody was qualified to write a book on this subject, it's you. Because I, I just, you, you do you. it so well. And just, I don't know, it's just sort of like uh, built into who you are as an online personality. I mean, you're just so good at like engaging, like just even the emails you send out and the videos you make, like it's just part of your brand and part of who you are. And a lot of brands, most brands are not like that. A lot of people yeah. are just run of the mill whatever, but you just have this way of getting people to engage. And so, yeah, man, I'm glad you're doing this. Thank you. If people want to find out more about that book, where do they go? What, what do they do? Yeah. So you can go to your superfans.com. Uh, I'm not sure when this podcast episode will be out, but if you happen to catch it before August 13th, there's a little uh, pre-order deal that you can get it uh, and take advantage of uh, at your superfans.com before then. But afterwards, your superfans.com will, will drive you there too. Or I, I don't know. Uh, Seth or, or Jaron, if you have like a special link you want people to go through, if yeah, have affiliate link, go go through their affiliate link, and um, if you happen to pre-order it and submit your receipt at yoursuperfans.com before the launch date, you'll get the audiobook for free. Awesome! I believe FlynnCon, the first is it the first ever FlynnCon is coming up. Ever FlynnCon, yes. Yeah. So my audience is known as Team Flynn. That's one strategy I talk about in the book because you want to give your community a name, something that they could grab uh, onto. And and you know, there's like Team Gary V, Team Tim Ferriss. You know, I'm Team Flynn, and and I, I like the word Team because it makes us feel like we're part of something together, right? Like mm -hmm. I might wear the C on the shoulder, I'm the team captain, but hey, I might pass you the ball every once in a while. You're going to score and we're all going to win because of it. And, and, and I wanted to put together an event that could bring Team Flynn together, uh, hence my first event called FlynnCon. And it's really cool because I, I didn't have to work very hard to promote it because the super fans are coming out and they're buying tickets and it's going to be a lot of fun. We have about 500 entrepreneurs coming to San Diego and it's a two and a half day full experience, one stage, just mostly me on stage presenting and taking people through a program to help them press start on their next big thing. And uh, we have a lot of fun surprises. We're doing things in a little bit uh, non-traditional way. So for example, I have special guests, but you won't know who they are until you are there and you you, you hear their announcement. We have a, a weekend long Mario Kart tournament that's happening. I mean, just I want to create it in a way that's fun, but also brings the community together because whenever I've done that on a smaller scale, like when I go speak at an event, you know, I'll run out a restaurant and, and my fans will come out and they'll, they'll speak to each other and we'll have a lot of fun together and, and dine together. But I always hear like, oh man, it was so fun to meet people just like me who like are, are building businesses, who can speak the same language. And I never get an opportunity to do that. And people have formed partnerships. People have created mastermind groups in those little meetups and restaurants. What would happen in a two and a half day period? And, and that's what I want to experiment with. And I'm, I'm scared to death and I just want to make sure everybody's experience is great. And I know that this is going to be fantastic because every other moment in my life when I felt this way, amazing things have happened. Mm -hmm. When I started my business, when I started my podcast, when I started speaking on stage for the first time, I've always had these very same feelings of just like a full day of excitement slash being in fetal position, just scared to death. <laughs> it's always been great on the other end. And I think that scaredness, that nervousness is actually something I look I look toward now. That's how I know that that's worth doing because if I wasn't nervous, it probably isn't big or, or bold enough. Uh, so so that's, that's where we're at with FlynnCon at the end of July here. Yeah, um, I think I heard you say that years ago, uh, talking about when you were about to start your podcast, like you put it off for a year or two because you were scared. But every time you've been scared like that, it's because something great was about to happen. And for me, 
being somebody who's afraid of everything. I just <laughs> fear is so built into how I think. Uh, that was very, very encouraging to me. And, and I think anybody else out there, it, it's it's worth just taking note of that because I think I think there's a lot of truth to, you know, it, when you've got fear, when you have uncertainty, like it could be like exactly the sign you want to see that something awesome is just around the corner and you don't want to like quit or give up or run away just because that fear is there. Oh. Right. I mean, you, you've seen that thing where it says like, you know, your comfort zone and it's like a circle and there's yeah. like a dot outside of your comfort zone that says like, this is where awesome things happen. It's always mm-hmm. going to be outside of your comfort zone. The truth is if you just stay in your comfort zone, nothing's going to change. Mm-hmm. You, yes, you'll be, you'll be complacent, which is maybe a better word, but will you be happy? Will you be satisfied if you stay there? Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a really good book called The War of Art by a guy named Stephen Pressfield that's all about this, the self-resistance that happens and how it's actually a, a, go- a good thing mm-hmm. um, that this fear pops up. And it just, it just proves that this is important to you and it, it proves that uh, it's going to be something great if you, if you get through it and, and there's good reason to get through it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think we're not alone. You and I are very similar. Yeah. Have you ever taken the Enneagram test? Uh, I have. I am a three. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm a three. Um, my wife is a six and I have friends who are ones and the ideogram is really important too. I think th- I would highly recommend that for people because it really helps you understand more about kind of who you are and, and, and why you behave the way you behave and what lights you up and, 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 and what brings you down. And especially in relationships, knowing somebody else's number and what they respond to can help you better communicate with them. It's helped me in my businesses. It's helped me in my relationships. It's, 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 a uh, something that I thought was kind of weird at first when I was like, oh, I don't want to label myself a number. Like, oh, what number are you? But then I was yeah. like, oh, this is really helpful because it's not about the number. It's, it's what that number represents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Are you still doing uh, like podcast workshops and that kind of thing? I am. We had our uh, latest one uh, in San Diego last month and we had a group of 15 people come in to learn in a two-day period what they can learn also in my online course, uh, Self-Study, but they wanted to come in and get some hands-on help and uh, they're, they're doing great. Uh, yeah. They're launching their podcasts in August and September uh, and, and putting it together and recording right now, which is, which is really neat. But yeah, yeah. The, I, I love teaching in person too. And again, not passive at all. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I've, I've gotten over the, the idea of everything having to be passive because sometimes the, there is some manual work that needs to be done to best help people, especially those who, who want to be there in person with you. Yeah, and I think lending to that whole super fans end result, like that's just a very consistent thing I've always seen from everything that's come from you, Pat, is like whether it's your free ebook or your videos or blog posts or your workshops, like it always over delivers. Like it's always better than I thought it was going to be, even when I already had high expectations. And I've tried to really like uh, take that whole uh, philosophy as well. And pretty much everything I put out there is like, like I'll, I'll spend more time than I think is necessary. Like I'll go over the top just cause like I want people to have that wow factor. Like if it comes from me, it's gotta be amazing. Like that's, that's just a, an expectation people ought to have. Yeah. And uh, I got that from you. So th- Thank thanks. You. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, Jaron, what do you think? Is there anything else uh, we want to ask him? No, man. I uh, I know I was quiet over here, but I was just soaking it in. I was telling Seth before the show that uh, since 2011, when I was first introduced to Smart Passive Income, this has uh, been a dream of mine. So I'm just honored to be here. And Thank you. Um, yeah, man. For anybody who is in real estate, the stuff that Pat – teaches is really powerful. When I used to work at Simple Wholesaling, the company there, they were doing about eight to 12 deals a month. And using the principles that Pat teaches and uh, the power of branding, we were able to scale that business to doing 30 deals a month, buying and selling 30 properties a month. And it works. You know, it, it's not a direct ROI. You can't really track the relationship. Like you can't, what, what kind of ROI are you going to metric? What are you going to use to track relationship? But if you can serve people and you can actually legitimately make these super fans, it'll take your business and in, into an infinity, infinity ROI. It's huh. not trackable. So. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for the support. I, I hope everybody picks up super fans and, uh, I think it'll help you in, in your business. And yeah. just, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely. Thanks again, Pat. I wish you all the best in everything you do. The listeners out there, if you haven't checked out Pat's stuff, you need to. It's very important. It'll change your life, probably like it changed mine. And uh, 
yeah, I'd strongly encourage everybody to do that. So thank us again, Pat. Appreciate you, man. And Thank you. hopefully we'll talk later.